Welcome to another episode of the Real Estate Happy Hour Weekly. I'm your host, Chris Wright. So today's episode is yet another implementation of the seven minute podcast series, and these were recorded in the winter of 2023. Um, so the seven minute podcast series consisted of interviews with some of the movers and shakers and philanthropists in the capital region, um, basically the New York, Albany, and Saratoga regions. Uh, today, our guest is Melissa Rathbun. Um, she is the CEO of New Ward Development. Now, since these videos are old, things change and evolve so quickly. So I'm going to clarify a few things that you'll hear um, on the video. So I'm no longer working at Grasshopper Heating and Cooling. Um, I went back to full-time real estate at Oxford Property Group. Um, I did work at Grasshopper in the sales department for about nine months, and I had the opportunity to work with some amazing people. And I learned a lot about that trade industry, but real estate is my passion. That's my jam. It's my heart. So I decided to go back to that full time. But I do wish I do wish uh, the best to Amanda Triolo and her team. And I have nothing but good things to say about that experience. Um, Amanda Triolo was actually one of our guests on the Seven Minute Podcast series. You can check that out on our um, YouTube website, Chris Wright Speaks. Um, also, I mentioned that I am a client of Melissa Rathbun, and I'm still a client. Um, we have some unfinished business to do. Um, Melissa helped me build a great website for not only marketing, you know, these podcasts and videos, but also to market the training and speaking arm of the Chris Wright Speaks communication entity. So we'll get right back um, to our show and the interview with Melissa right after this. This is the Real Estate Happy Hour, and I'm your host, Chris Wright. It's a fun place where we talk real estate, pop culture, and what's trending. Hey, I might even give you some good advice. So grab yourself a drink, sit back, relax, and take a listen. Unless you're driving, of course. I'll see you guys on the other side. All right, so we are back, and again, we're going to jump right into this video. You're going to learn a lot about... Um, Melissa Ward, what she's doing. She's also a Rotarian. Ironically, my guest last week was uh, Jennifer Fogg. She was also a Rotarian at some point. So the Rotary Club does some great things in our area. So, um, you know, let's get into this video and I hope you enjoy it and hope you learn some things from it. All right, here we are. Melissa Rathbun, New Ward Development. One welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of Seven Minutes. I am Chris Wright, your host. I'm with my co-host, Beverly Swim. Good afternoon, everybody. Hey, today we have the honor to interview one of my favorite people in the Capital Region. Please welcome Melissa Ward Rathbun. Give her a nice hey, everybody. Hey, Melissa. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. So, Melissa, one of the reasons that um, I really wanted to interview because when it comes to digital marketing and digital online presence, you're just one of the people that. Anytime we that's mentioned on, who do you know? Who do you know? They always say, Melissa, call Melissa, oh, right? That's right. Oh, that's nice to know. <laughs> Good. So you have a very big, because you know, if they don't contact you, they're going to go to GoDaddy, they're going to go to Wix, they're going to go to Squarespace and all these places, and they're going to try and figure it out, all right? And then I don't want people to just call you to build their website, because you're so much more than that, all right? So... Why don't you tell us a little bit about the name of your company is New Ward Development. Oh. So why don't you tell everybody what you do and what that company is all about? All right. So New Ward started in 99. Oof. Well, I've been doing this a long time. <laughs> as a web development firm. And um, as in, oh, so then in 2004, I took on a business partner and we became New Ward. So his name is Bob Newberry and my name was Melissa Ward. So we became New Ward, very simple. Um, he's a hardcore programmer, database guy, um, does all the stuff that I hate doing. Um, and then with the growth of social networks and social media, um, it was really just such a natural fit for me to use that to help businesses build followings and, you know, generate sales and interests. And that's a big chunk of what we do is we manage other companies, social media profiles. Um, we do their ad campaigns. Um, and yes, we do websites. 
uh, we host. Um, and it was funny, you mentioned some of the big names. Mm -hmm. You know, if you text GoDaddy at 10 o'clock at night because something's wrong with your website, they ain't answering. <laughs> <Nope>. <laughs> I do. <laughs> so, you know, we partnered with INOC in Albany to have really top of the line hosting servers. Um, those guys are the hardcore, you know, hardware gurus. Um, and I end up being customer service, really. And um, it's been working out very nicely for us. So it's it's a nice um, full package, right? So from the website to the hosting, to the social media management, content creation, emails, the whole gamut, we cover it. Your one-stop shop. Well, I have personal experience because I am a client of yours and um, it ain't over. I just got busy right in the middle of working with you. So not even worried about it. That's all right. I know, but my life just took off. I joined Grasshopper Heating and Cooling. I've been so busy. I haven't been, been able to focus on the speaking portion, but getting back to that. But I just wanted to let you know, but what, like you said, uh, anytime we've had email conversations back and forth, 9 30, 10 o'clock at night, 7 30, 8 o'clock in the morning. So she's always there, then you're always a present. So I do appreciate I mean, I do that. vacation, you know, <laughs> and sure. sleep. Um, I mean, but, I, you know, like, um, Actually, I think it was two, two or three weeks ago, we were driving up to Quebec mm -hmm. and um, a hosting client, uh, she's trying to edit her own website and she had like question. And I was like, yeah, it's just, just about to cross the border. Here's the, here's the answer. And she's like, oh, I'm sorry. Did, and I'm like, don't, it's a text message. It's like, it's not a big deal. And it makes me feel good to know that, you know, a lot of people are really intimidated by their websites and by technology and by all of it. And I don't want them to be, right? If if I had my way, nobody would be scared of changing their website. Um, yeah. So technology, free to dive in. speaking of technology, it, it's made it so easy to do everything. Like you got all these do-it-yourself people at home, sitting yeah. behind a computer, sitting behind a desk. How has that changed the way you do business or how you market your business? Because so many people can do easy things, so to speak. So, um, uh, so there's a couple of things. So some of those... Some, I'm not going to say all, but some of those, you know, uh, plug and play platforms are not very search engine friendly. So it really depends upon what your goals are, right? So if you want to make a website just to have a brochure on the internet so that when people, you know, go to your website, they have a place to go. Great. That's a perfect answer for you. But if you're in a highly competitive market and you need to have search engine optimization and, you know, you're going to be getting into pay-per-click advertising and you need to, you know, have your local SEO and all that sort of stuff. Then you need, you need somebody like me on your, either in your, on your payroll or, or me, you, you know what I mean? So it's, everybody's got an uncle Joe that can build a website. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> they do. Yeah. And that's fine. Um, you know, WordPress makes it pretty easy to be able to build out websites. Um, I mean, we do customizations. Like, Chris, if you looked around, nobody's going to have a website that looks like your website. Nope. Right. It's you an know. awesome website. Can't wait to use it, but I love it. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I mean, that's the point, right? So it's, it's you know, you can plug and play all you want. And, and you know, if you select the uh, health coach, you know, template, um, there might be 50 other health coaches that have the same exact template that you do. Um, and it, it depends on your goals. I mean, that's really what it is. I don't begrudge anybody doing what they think is best for their business. Um, if they want to level up, then they know where to find people like me. I'm sure that I'm, I'm sure that your success has come from you listening to your clients and understanding what they want and how they need what they need to do to get there. So it makes total sense. You you do business development, you do websites and social media. How do you manage your day? I, I just do. So, you know, it's funny. Everybody talks about time management and um, yeah, I'm fairly good at that. Like I have a calendar. It has times blocked out for certain things. Um, I manage outside time. But the one rule that I do have is that I don't schedule more than 40% of my day. So that other 60% of the day is left for, I, my brain sometimes just goes and I have to pursue that thought. Mm. Um, 
that's how like I recently um, I'm launching um, social media planners. Like, so I, I'm doing one for non for profits, one for real estate agents, one for entrepreneurs. And um, I, it literally just started off as this idea of, you know, wouldn't it be nice for people to have a workbook, like an actual piece of paper where they can jot their thoughts down, particularly if they're intimidated by, you know, the digital medium, but then they, they have a place to get their thoughts together. And then they can convert that to Facebook posts and, and what have you. Um, and literally when the idea hit me, I just, I had to, I had to get it done. So, and for emergencies, right? So the other day um, I have a client that actually did switch over to Wix, but she didn't realize that her email was going to get demolished. Yeah. So I spent a lot of time that, I'm not getting paid for to help with that. And I'm okay with that because she's a great person, but you know, that was like, that was three, four hours out of my day mm. that you, you know, you kind of just, because you just want to help somebody out. Yeah. So I, it, this is not me, of course, you know, but there, there's also people out there who say to you, Melissa, I hate Facebook. I hate Twitter and Instagram, but I know I need to be there. What do you do and how can you help them? So you have to find out what they hate about it, right? And most of the times, the it's things just that touching they, it. <laughs> yeah, well, when, most of the times, the things that they hate about it are on the personal side. Yeah, it's not really about their business. Mm -hmm. So you can interact less as an individual and still work on your business, right? There's scheduling tools. Facebook offers a scheduling tool. You can schedule out a week or two. And then just pay attention to your business page and the comments and whatever, you know, messages you're getting there and ignore the stuff that you don't like. Mm. It's very possible. That's interesting. I think there's a fear of, I don't want to do this, even though I know I need to do this because once I start, I'm, I'm kind of committed and now I'm afraid I'm not going to have time. So instead they just don't start. If you, so it's kind of like anything else in your business, right? You have to use this tool strategically. What, what is your goal for using a Facebook and Instagram, a LinkedIn, a whatever it is, TikTok? What are those goals? And what are the steps that you need to take to implement those goals? And how can you do that as efficiently as possible? I find that scheduling tasks in a chunk like scheduling out posts, say for a week, actually helps me stay focused. So I can have a theme for week one, and then I can have a different theme for week two, but the graphics tend to look the same, the post, you know, like, so it kind of all meshes together. And that makes it significantly easier than, you know, trying to run your brain for an hour or so every day, trying to figure out what to post on, on your social media channels. So just sit down for two hours on a Monday, say, and think about the messages that you want people to have about you and just start writing it out. And then before you know it, you're going to have five or 10 different posts and you can schedule it all right there. And then poof, you're done. Do you limit the amount of clients you take on? Because it seems like if you have too many, you can't service them the way you really want to. Um. So we've been experiment. I mean, we have used um, 1099s. We're experimenting a little bit with um, virtual assistants, mm -hmm. but everything has to be done in a way that I can, I have to see it. I have to pre-approve it. Like I still have to touch everything. Mm -hmm. I can't, I just, I'm not, I can't not do that. <laughs> uh, you know, it's so funny you said that because um, <laughs> one, ent one entity that I'm working with, she said, oh yeah, just call my assistant. She's in Kosovo. I was like, what? Oh. Yeah. But there, it's, I mean, it's worked out, but I can understand the apprehension to actually do something like that. Yeah. And particularly, right, with social media, um, the majority of my clients are in the United States. So I need an uh, English speaking, probably in the first, you know, their first language is English. Um, I assume. I don't, you know, I don't know. This is something that we're just kind of poking around at. Um, I have a couple of, of interests from Canada, um, but I don't speak French. So that's going to be uh, sort of an interesting foray. Gotcha. Mm. 
you know, thank you also for all the um, the nonprofit work that you have done. Why don't you tell us a little little bit about that? I'm a huge fan of Rotary. Um, so I joined Rotary in 2003 as a charter member of the Twin Bridges Rotary Club, which is uh, meets now they meet down at Grecian Garden in Clifton Park. Um, but shortly after uh, becoming a, a Rotarian, um, I found myself in Zimbabwe on a mission. And that was really the thing that brought it home for me. So it all started because one of our members was away on vacation and <clears throat> she met a gentleman who brought her to a school that was in really bad shape. Um, and he was looking for help on how to, how to get the school repaired. She brought this idea to our club. And this to me is like the, the magic of Rotary. So our club then took that idea and we shared it with another club and another club and with our district and with another district and the district in um, Zimbabwe. And before you knew it, I think it was like six months, maybe six or seven months that I was on a plane landing in Victoria Falls um, and then driving 45 minutes out into the bush to help paint chalkboards. And we um, had 300 desks and chairs built. And so that, that's the, the, it was the ability to reach and get things done and to make all of those connections to get those things done is really what sold me on Rotary. And um, I, I've been loyal ever since, even now out here, right? So you know that I live out in Middle Grove. Um, I'm starting a new club here in Galway. And um, it's really nice. These people are more neighborhood focused, which is fine because um, Rick and I have lived here for, I don't know, about mm, five, six years. And we really don't know a lot of our neighbors. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so this has been a really wonderful opportunity in a lot of different ways. And I've got to meet other non-for-profit, other non-for-profits in the area and find out what they're doing and figure out ways that we can all partner together, right? Because that's where the power is, is that when everybody gets to work together. Now, is L Lorenzo Murray in your Rotary? No, he's in Albany. Okay, so he okay. and Marissa, the, that whole crew, they're all in Albany. They used to be in the capital region mm -hmm. one and that just kind of dispersed, but people went to other clubs, which is very cool. I want to get involved too. So Galway is they're close to Boston over. Spa. Yeah, they're yeah, all in the capital district. There are. There's probably about um, close to 40 clubs just in the capital region. Um, I mean, there's a club in Boston Spa that's hugely active. Uh, okay. They're a great club. They are awesome. a busy I, club. I did not know that. Yeah, they meet. Well, they actually have either a breakfast meeting. I think they still do that, either a breakfast meeting or a lunch meeting. Like you have a choice when you want to, you know, connect with them. Um, and uh, they they are, I mean, they really get things done. They're the ones that sell the Christmas trees down at Curtis Lumber. Oh, that's uh, true. That See, I thought that was yours. I thought that was Twin oh, Bridges. No, that's, uh, yeah, no, that's Balsam Spa. They're really great. They're a great group. That's good to know. I'll reach out. And it's really great because you can, if you, you know, you just contact the person in, in charge, you can visit, you can visit every single one of them. You want to grow yep. your circle of influence and your network and who you know, it's a great opportunity. It really is. It is. And There's a lot of really wonderful people. A lot of like-minded people. And that's what you want, right? Definitely. You're very excited. I think you need to get back in. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? The thing, the thing to me that's kind of cool about it is that you know, when a new member comes in and they bring an idea, right? And they, um, maybe they're aware of a population that is not being served well and that needs help. Well, that they can bring that into the Rotary Club and the Rotary Club can embrace that and help out and lend a hand and maybe connect with other clubs to be able to make that bigger. And, you know, I see a lot of people that create not-for-profits and they're these small little not-for-profits and they struggle sometimes to be able to raise funds and get volunteers and they don't believe me when I say just bring your idea to a Rotary Club right, right. you know you save me a lot of paperwork and you know we can really help get the job done hey Melissa you've been doing some public speaking uh, um, we talked about this when I told mm -hmm. you what my journey was like tell yeah. me about your public speaking and and where do you speak what do you speak about what's your thing so I started uh, public speaking, I don't know, um, 
asked, I had a speech coach, a woman by the name of Dale Klein, and she's the one who gave me the idea literally decades ago to use public speaking as a marketing tool. Um, And she helped me put together uh, some of my first presentations. And I still go to her if I have a a concern and and I'll, I'll, I'll speed that up. Sorry. So, um, so I've been using public speaking for a long time. Um, recently, uh, we did a, a women's symposium over in Burt Hills where we brought together um, six business owners, six women, um, and the theme was resilience. And I spoke about something called the imposter syndrome, which is something that a lot of business owners deal with, but has become more prevalent with social media and kind of how to overcome that. Um, I'm putting together a presentation now. Um, I'm going to be doing it actually in a couple of different ways about um, video shorts, the power of short form video, mm. things like TikTok and reels and stories and stuff like that. Um, so I'll that. be speaking. Yeah, I'll be speaking uh, for the colony. The colony chamber is actually it's a Zoom thing. So you might be able to hop on. Mm-hmm. Um And then I'm going to be doing that in a couple of different ways, because right now I think that that's that's a huge tool. Um, short form video, people have short attention spans. They can't sit in front of a video for 15 minutes any longer. Um, and it, it's, them, it's so popular too. It, it is, but it's, but there's, right? So again, like everything else, there's strategy, right? So you have to be somewhat strategic about how you use the tool so that it accomplishes your goals. Yeah, so it's so funny you say that because I will post the, um... The, the, this interview and for the few, first few days it would gradually you know catch fire you know sure. and then it would die and then i would put up a reel of it just a 30 a, a one minute clip of it and all of a sudden it takes off again sure. so it's like it's up it's down up back again so it's pretty yeah. cool what real and again, it, right so that's and that's exactly what you should be doing right mm-hmm. so you create interest on the initial post um you may or may not have a call to action there but then you start taking that and you give it more push in other places and people start taking action on it. Yeah. It's, you know, people see, have to see things more than once to be able to click a button sometimes. So I've only known, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead, Beverly. You were gonna ask a question. No, I was gonna say that the your the world of social media must have changed so much since you went into, your, into business. I'm wondering, do you see anything in the in the future that, Maybe maybe something's gonna pop up, something different. I mean, I know that we've seen TikTok grow, but I mean, you see any other changes? So Facebook is gonna be pushing hard for this whole metaverse thing, especially with the now popularity of the chat, the chat AIs. Mm-hmm. Um, I think we're gonna get to the point where you and I are standing in the metaverse, and my AI is gonna be responding to your AI, and yeah. nobody's gonna be having conversations anymore, which I don't like. I don't actually don't like that idea. Um, it's, called, it's called chat gpt or something like that yeah yeah actually there's there's a bunch of different ones if you google it if you have like a specific purpose in mind you can google ai you know and it's just it's crazy what i won't do it unless i have a conversation with you first <laughs> <laughs> it's i mean it's really interesting though so we experimented with it um my uh, my husband was talking about having to give himself a self evaluation at work, right? Mm-hmm. So I typed into the thing and I said, "What are good questions to ask for a professional self evaluation?" And I had him read through the questions, and he's like, "You know what? These are not bad. <laughs> These are actually pretty good." Yeah. Um, and you have to realize though that it's uh, data. I think is only up to 2021, right? Mm-hmm. So it it's not up to date, up to date. Yeah. Um, but it's still, it's it's interesting and intimidating all at the same time. Hey, I know um, I know more about Melissa, the businesswoman, than I knew about Melissa, the friend or the fun person. What do you do for fun? Uh, well, winter snowmobile. So um, we've spent a good couple of weeks in Quebec. Uh, we actually go where it's colder. <laughs> like like the, um, the Quebec City area? Uh, So actually north of that. So we we drive, we're into the province of Quebec. um, And uh, there's, we do what's called uh, backpacking. So we start at one hotel and we have all of our stuff and it's in a bag on the back of the sled. And then we drive 
uh, I don't know, 150, 200 miles to the next hotel. And then we spend the night there. And then we do the same thing over the course of a week. And it's really cool. It's the best way to see some of the most phenomenal scenery. And um, it's beautiful and it's challenging and it's just fun. And I've met some really, really wonderful, wonderful people snow wheeling. It's just everybody's, you know, kind of friendly and they're happy that you're there having a good time. Whatever, so that's whatever. one thing. Go ahead. Whatever happened to Meetup? Remember Meetup.com where people were meeting up? It's still there. Is it? It still exists. If you want to do anything that's like really, you know, like meaningful, you have to pay to create your own group. And that's like, I don't know, 30 bucks a month, 50 bucks a month. I don't know. But it's still there. It still exists. So what else? What else you do for fun? What do you read? You, uh -huh. watch, you binge watch TV? What are, you, what are you doing? I'm not a, you know, it's funny because I've been watching some of the videos and I see that Beverly always asks people what they're reading. And I'm like, shoot, I'm not reading anything right now. <laughs> <laughs> I am not a prolific, prolific, is that the appropriate? Yeah. yeah. Uh, reader. Good word. Good word though. I do have some books that, you know, clients have sent me um, and I always read their stuff. I do love some, you know, business and marketing books, that kind of stuff. But for fun, fun, I like to travel. I like to cook. I like to garden. Um, my dogs keep me way busy. They're adorable. Um, and that's really it. And, you know, hang out with friends. I love hanging out with friends and just, you know, having a good chat over, you know, a glass of wine. That's what I'm having. <laughs> All right. Well, Beverly, ask your final question. What can we expect from you in the upcoming? Oh, that's a really great question. One of my goals this year is to be able to communicate in a broader way. So I think part of that is like the, the social media books. Um, I think there's going to be more uh, recordings that could kind of be played on demand that have evergreen lessons on them for people. Um, so I think it's going to be stuff like that. I, I want to... It's funny, every year for my birthday, I have a conversation with um, a friend of mine, or well, a client a friend, um, and she's a reader. And um, she gave me like, you know, I said, well, this is what I'm thinking of. And she's like, that's exactly it. That's what you're supposed to be doing. You're supposed to be educating in a big way and mm -hmm. empowering and blah, 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 blah. So I guess that's my path this year. <laughs> that's exciting. Awesome. awesome. Well, with that, we're going to end. Thank you so much for coming on. We appreciate it. And um, I appreciate you guys. Thank you so much. Absolutely. And like all these videos, like they, they're gaining traction. You and I are going to talk about how we really want them to take off in the future. So I, that's going to be part of our next phase when we work together. So I'm, I'm looking forward to that. All Me right. Too. Yep. All right, guys. So take care and I'll talk to you later. All right. Bye, Melissa. Care, guys. Thank you. Bye -bye. Have a great night. All right, so there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. That was our interview with Melissa Ward back in 2023. Um, so just a, a few follow-up things before we go today. Um, if you want to check out her work, my website is chriswrightspeaks.com. Again, it is a work in progress. Uh, we just I'm just trying to figure out what I'm going to do with it, how I'm going to use it. But one of the things I want to do is be able to communicate with you with what I'm doing um, how did this cor uh, correlate with real estate? Because this is called the Real Estate Happy Hour Weekly. So many real estate agents are trying to figure out how to reach their public, how to reach their database and the people they want to stay in contact with. And um, this is just one of the ways, contacting people like Melissa and saying, hey, I want something that's different, something that's unique. I love a website. I want some marketing ideas. How do I keep my face relevant and in front of the public. So this is a really good way to learn that. I've gone to classes on how to get over your camera fear, um, how to do videos and things like that. So uh, this was very relatable to marketing, um, very relatable to uh, maintaining a presence and being relevant. Also, we talked about in this video, we mentioned ChatGPT. And at the time that we did this video, ChatGPT was, it wasn't new, but it universally, um, people started to learn more about it. And then at the time that I was at Grasshopper, uh, Amanda Triola was using it a lot in her business as well. But there's also other companies like Google Bard, B-A-R-D. Google has another type of um, GPT service or chat service, AI, I should say, 
that can also help you formulate structure on speaking and things like that. Short form video, if you've been following me on social media, on LinkedIn, on TikTok, on Facebook, Instagram reels and things like that, you see that I use a lot of short form video. And that, that's just to keep you engaged between the time that I record shows. So um, definitely something that's getting really, really big. In fact, reels and TikToks have become bigger than even like long form YouTube or Facebook Live, Instagram Live and things like that because we have short attention spans <clears throat> and um, people just love the 30 second to 90 second video clips just to see what's going on and to decide if they want to watch the whole video. Also, um, I also, just like Melissa, I've written a whole class on short form, short form video and social media. So you can actually hire me to do that if that's something that you're interested in learning about and how you can do that for your own business or you know yourself. Maybe you wanna get into that. So other than that, ladies and gentlemen, that's our episode for this week. Um, I hope that you enjoyed it and um, I look forward to the next show. We are going to have our traditional Real Estate Happy Hour Weekly coming up next week. So um, I hope you enjoyed Melissa. If you want to reach out to or just reach out to me and I can connect you. She's also on Facebook and every other social media platform. So other than that, I'll talk to you guys later and you have a great, great night.